Hope everyone is having a wicked day today. Welcome to episode number four of the YouTube channel, all right? We're in the Raw and Ready series and we are on shoulders, all right? She doesn't want to be on camera, but we're gonna get a sneak little preview right now. I brought Helen along because there is no reason I couldn't bring Helen along because she's got better delta than me, so I thought we're hitting shoulders. I've got to bring the little delt queen along with me, so that's exactly what's going down. We're literally going to hit a nice little warm-up just to get everything fired up and uh, yeah, and just get into it. What we are going to be hitting for this warm-up is just some lateral raises, some front raises and some bent over reverse flies. Basically, the objective is to just fire up all three heads of the shoulders. If anyone didn't know, you've got your front delts, side delts and rear delts. So literally some fronts, sides and rears just to get a little bit of blood moving around. And uh, yeah, like as we have done throughout the whole series so far, almost just get the muscle fired up, get everything nice and warm before we actually start the session. So I don't count this as a working exercise, just a little bit of a warm up. Perfect little three exercises just to get everything fired up. That's exactly what we want. When I'm doing this, again, when I'm trying to warm the shoulders up, I see a lot of people when they're doing sort of lightweight warm ups or anything like that, just swinging the weight. We're not just trying to actually just fire the weight about. We're actually trying to contract the working muscle get everything fired up for the actual working sets so that when it comes to doing any front sides or rears, the muscle is already fired up. So when I'm hitting them lateral raises, I'm literally thinking about driving out with my elbow. I'm not pulling it back. I'm not kind of swinging it forwards. I'm literally coming straight out to the side. The elbow is the driving force, so the elbow is gonna contract that side delt. When I'm coming up to the front, I'm literally thinking about actually raising it. I'm not trying to swing the weight, I'm trying to actually raise the weight focus on the front delts and then control it down. When I'm hitting them rears, I'm bending over just enough so that I can come back and contract out here. My arms aren't completely straight because I'm going to get too much traps involved, but they're not completely bent because again, I'm going to over engage the traps. I'm going to start engaging the back. So I want them just slightly bent, coming back and focusing on hitting the rear part of the shoulder. I'm going to work up in the weight just a little bit, just to again, get everything fired up and then we'll go from there. That's what I'm talking about. You get two or three sets in on that, everything starts flowing, which is exactly what we want. So what we're gonna do is, again, just pyramid up one more time. Just make sure everything's nice and warm before we're gonna go into a heavy press for the first working exercise. We're gonna hit a nice machine press for this one because we haven't done it in ages. So heart rate's up, getting the blood flowing, starting to get a bit of sweat on. I've done three sets, all right, think about it. I know it's warm in the UK right now, it's about freaking time as well. If you're not getting warm in the warm up, What's your warm-up? Do you know what I mean? You've got to be putting that work in. This is 30 rep sets, so we're talking 10 sides, 10 fronts, 10 rears. Get everything warm. And uh, yeah, as soon as we start hitting that press, everything is actually contracted. Everything's fired up and we're ready to go. Blue Raz going down today. Two scoops for that big delt session. It's like nearly eight o'clock at night now, so I've had like five meals right now, so this should be a pretty naughty session. Five meals, pump pre-workout, it's going off. First work and exercise, shoulders are feeling pretty fired up right now. So we're gonna hit hamstring shoulder press. Again, when we're doing this, we're targeting the front delts. So as I'm pushing up, I'm really focusing on not just moving the weight and just trying to bang the weight up. I'm actually trying to focus on stretching my front delt out, contracting it as it's coming up, feeling that front delt nice and tight, and then stretching the muscle out. Like I said before, stretch and squeeze, all right? Two words that you should keep in your head throughout every single session. And if you're not, you'll lose that kind of mind-muscle connection. Think about it, we're stretching on the way down. When we press, we squeeze, okay? Easy work while we're warming up.
Right, this is pretty heavy shoulder press, right? Anyone knows this shoulder press, it is pretty heavy. Once again, as I've always said throughout every single session that we've done so far, no matter how much weight goes on this, the form will always remain the same. So I'm not gonna sacrifice the form just to try and move a little bit more weight. This is a very sort of kill your ego and actually focus on the muscle machine. All right, so um, if you get a chance to get on one of these and you know that you can actually move a decent amount of weight under control, you know you're doing something all right. The old faithful. Two and a half years I've had these wrist wraps. They've still not broke. Yeah, like I said, I need to get pretty psyched and pretty in the zone right now because two plates to three plates on this is like a bit of a game changer. So when I'm talking about shoulders, well, I mentioned to you before about three different heads in the shoulder. Like, if you want to create like a physique that has almost like that V-tapered look, you've got to think about bringing out the shoulders because a lot of the time what, you, what you'll find in gyms is Everyone will do a lot of work on chest, a lot of work on arms, nothing on legs, a little bit on back and probably barely any shoulders as well. But shoulders actually make such a big difference to your physique. If you've got a good set of shoulders, as soon as you turn side on, you can see that full 3D look. It makes you actually look so much bigger and so much wider from just a small muscle. So realistically, it's nowhere near the size of our chest or the size of our back. But literally, if you work that front delt, you work that side delt and you work that rear delt, you can just add so much more to the side of your physique. As soon as you turn side on, it's like, okay, right, now we're creating a good taper. So think about that. Don't skip shoulders, or if you do a push session, don't go all out on chest and then do barely any shoulders and do no triceps like we've mentioned last time. Do equally as much shoulders as you would, chest as you would, legs as you would, back, do you know what I mean? And then you will develop a full, well-rounded physique. So when I'm thinking about Stuff like this as well. This is a beauty of using like a machine variation instead of a dumbbell. Equally not, one is sort of not better than the other, but on a machine I find that I can really, really push the boundaries of failure because it's always under control. The moment that I can't do that weight anymore, I can just put it down. Whereas example, if you've kicked 250 kilo dumbbells up above your head, the moment you can't do that weight, it's coming down a distance, you know what I mean? So it's always a safe exercise when you're doing it. Really, really rinse these exercises to failure, to true failure where you physically can't move it anymore when you get the best out of it, because that's what I've found anyway. Try and hit failure on something like this and watch what you're doing when you're hitting dumbbells, because it can be a bit of a dangerous thing when you start lifting to failure. I need to go really heavy again here. All right, we're going new territory here. I haven't done three and a half on here before, so that's what we're going to do. We've got a helmet spot on me as well, just in case. See where we go. Last set, complete failure. But what we'll do on this set is we'll do a strip set as well, so we'll do a nice little drop set. We'll go. Uh, three plates and a ten, just as many as I can. Straight down to two plates, straight down to one plate for a burnout. So a nice little drop set. As you know, we like the volume as well as the weight. Once again, as I said in previous sessions, got the heavy weight, got the volume, got the intensity. I don't see any reason why you can't progress if you tick them three boxes. It takes it out of you on every single aspect. That was a good set, I'm happy with that. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yes! Good set. Lat raises, lat raises. Probably, my, without a shadow of a doubt, my favourite shoulder exercise by an absolute mile. So what we're going to do is we're just going to work up in sets and then throw something fancy on the end. So 
probably just get heavier every single set. Again, no matter what weight we're using, whether it's five, seven and a half, 10, 15, 20, whatever, the form will always stay the same. Ooh. No idea why I always like to wear my belt when I do lap races, but I just like to make sure that everything in my midsection is staying stupidly tight while I'm doing it. So, right, let's move up and wait and go again. trying to create that ultimate taper when we're hitting them side delts. Really, really round off right there. So that when we're hitting them side shots for men's physique, that is where it's popping. Shoulders have been one of my focus areas. Same as chest, same as back. Just up overall upper body thickness. So when I'm doing this, I'm, again, every single exercise has a purpose. I'm thinking about that. When I'm hitting them side lateral raises, I'm thinking about really contracting that outside head because I know I want it to pop off my body um, when I'm on stage. So as I get leaner, the muscle becomes closer to the skin, body fat goes out, the water goes out, it's just gonna round off and be full as hell. So that's what we want. Same again, but heavier, form stays the same. We keep moving that way. We think about driving the elbows, get the side delts fired up. So again, I'm just pyramiding the weight up really, really slowly. I'm not trying to jump up through crazy weights. I'm still only raising 15 kilo there. But again, form staying on point. I'm feeling every single rep on that. It feels like I've got a substantial enough pump to take off my oversized t-shirt now. <laughs> One more heavy round, and then we're gonna go straight in and attack a nice little set that'll explain after this. You win. Right, last set. This, well, I'm gonna do an ultra drop set here. So, I'm gonna go with 15, 12 and a half, 10, seven and a half, and just burn out on every single set. That's what I'm gonna do, because I absolutely love doing this. Overload the muscle, using the heavy weight, pyramiding down, getting the volume in, using lightweight. And again, the form never changes, so we just keep burning burning and burning and burning once it starts really really hurting just have to go through it for as long as we can so yeah let's do it eight nine ten ah ah oh if they ah Oh my 
God, come on. Partials to finish then. Why not? See what I mean about Sir Delt making such an impact here physique. Get that pop on the sides and it creates that shoulder to waist ratio that we're all looking for. Yeah, that's exactly what we want. Oh, it's what I need. I need that V taper for my competition. Tiny waist coming out to big shoulders. And again, I've been actually throwing some shoulders sometimes in my routine at the end of chest as well, just to double up on them because they're a relatively small muscle group and they recover fairly quickly. I'll just hit some sides, some rears and some fronts on the end of my chest sessions, but I also give shoulders a separate day to really make sure I give them that focus that they need. Because like I say, they have been a weak point of mine. I've always felt like I've had a decent taper, but it needs to be as capped as it possibly can for men's physique. So that again, when I'm hitting shots like this, or like this, I need that 3D look. So that's what I'm aiming for. And again, every single thing that I'm doing right now has a purpose. I'm overloading the side delts as much as I possibly can so that I get that pop. We're gonna do some front delts and rear delts superset. For anyone watching who doesn't know, superset is one exercise followed by the other, but no rest in between. We're gonna hit some front delts, either barbell or dumbbell, your preference really. And then we're actually gonna hit some bent over rear delt flies. So the exercise that we sort of did in the warm up but again, now we're gonna hit them for some working sets. And once we've actually really focused on capping the side delts off, I think the overload in the fronts and the rears just, just really, really gives off that rounded look to the shoulder. So again, we are looking to try and build that V taper. So that's exactly what needs to happen. So once again, I'm just gonna start light, get the range of motion, get everything absolutely nailed down and then work up in weight from there. So front superset with rears. It's perfect, one little round and we're evenly just using light weight there and that is already starting to get the blood right in there. So on that front raise, again, I'm really, really trying to focus on raising the weight up and contracting the front part of my shoulder. So I'm realistically, I'm just trying to target right here. So as I'm raising up, I'm trying to focus on lifting with that head of my shoulder right there. All right, and then once I'm coming down, I'm controlling the weight down. I'm not just trying to swing the weight, I'm focusing on actually raising up, hold, and then control back down. Then when it comes to the rear delt, bent over, back nice and straight, chest out. And then as I come back, like I said, when we were warming up there, my arms aren't completely straight because I'm gonna get too much of my traps, too much of my back. Slightly bent and I'm coming back and focusing right there. Okay, right on that rear delt, out. And then control straight back in, out and then control straight back in. All right, so again, try and keep that as strict as you possibly can. Yeah, get the weight moving, yeah, feel every single thing that you're doing, but keep it really, really strict and targeted on your rear delts. Starting to get a little bit of blood in there. So when we're looking at that rear delt, if anyone ever watches Seth Rossi, he's definitely someone that you need to check out. He always talked about that number seven shape in the delt. So you're actually looking at that downward shape right there, 
and this upward shape right there, you really, really hit all three heads of your shoulders. That front delt, side delt, and the rear delt, you're gonna get that shape right there, that number seven shape. That's what we're looking for. No one will get this unless you actually bodybuild yourself, but a lot of people would see someone like hitting a few shots in the mirror or hitting a few, like looking at themselves and like admiring themselves or anything like that. 99% of people, if you ever see them doing that, like I'm looking at the weak points of my physique when I'm doing that. I'm not like, oh yeah, I look great. I, I feel absolutely amazing, this, that, and the other. I'm actually looking at myself and analyzing myself and thinking, that needs more, that needs way more, that needs way, do you know what I mean? So, but a lot of people think that like, someone posing or someone kind of hitting a few shots in between sets is like, oh yeah, cocky, arrogant, kind of love themselves, all that shit. It's actually not the case whatsoever. Like, I'm actually looking at myself, and especially like competitive athletes are always gonna probably look at themselves and think, this is exactly what I need to work on. Because at the end of the day, before we go on stage, we're gonna pump up. We're gonna actually start moving a few dumbbells around to try and look bigger before we get on stage. This is a true reflection of exactly how that is gonna feel. So if you see how you feel when you're actually pumped, it's gonna make a huge difference to actually what you actually think and what you actually look like when you actually come to pump up before you're going on stage or anything like that. Just in general lifestyle though, like actually hitting a few shots and actually getting used to showing off the decent areas of your physique is overall only gonna make you a better individual anyway. It's gonna help bring individual parts of your physique out. So, so let's go again. There's no swing, no momentum. Oof. If you ever see me pausing like this in between reps, I'm trying to make sure I do not swing. Get the form and lift. Get the form, lift. Oh, that's it. I'm gonna drop that down actually. It felt better on seven and a half than it did heavier. No to everyone out there, there's no harm in dropping weight. I did my second set there on 12 and a half. Seven and a half felt miles better. Do not be scared to think, I'm gonna drop the weight because that feels miles better. Nine times out of 10 of the time. Well, in fact, every single time, that will do more for your physique than just trying to pick up a decent weight. Dropping down to them seven and a half has got me so much more fired up in my rear delts. That is gonna do way more for me than picking up that and just trying to end up swinging it and it starts to hurt my neck and that. I don't want that. Train smart and uh, focus on the actual feel of the movement. If that felt too heavy, I'd be lifting fives. Do you know what I mean? It's not the end of the world if you actually have to drop weight down, but people think you have to come in the gym and lift as heavy as possible. Not the case whatsoever. The sooner you realize you don't have to do that, the better your training is gonna be in the long run. Trust me on that, so bear that in mind. Oh, here we go. A few passes on the end just to fully fatigue them. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. 
God. That's what we want. Right, sweet. So what we are going to be hitting is some rear delts. All right. So again, we've already done sort of one one exercise to hit them rear delts, but I always like to at least double up or maybe even triple up on it sometimes. So with these reverse flies on the cables, the main target is to pull back and really, really hit that rear delt. Again, similar range of motion to exactly what we've just been doing, but just from a different angle. We're getting a great stretch on the actual rear delt right there. And then as we're pulling back, we're coming right out and really, really just focusing on contracting there. I'm not looking to try and come all the way back when I'm doing it. I'm literally going to a straightened position so that my rear delt actually contract right there and then I'll come back. So I'll show you exactly what I'm doing. Uh, 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 uh. So I'm in for around 10 to 15. And if you ever see me hitting like just half reps, it's just partial reps. So basically, once I can't do full reps anymore, I'm just going to hit the bottom end of the movement and just try and come out as far as I can just using this. So it's all about mind-muscle connection. To be fair, any exercise that we've done on any of the sessions is all about mind-muscle connection, but especially exercises like this because it's very easy, and I see a lot of people just being able to move the weight around. When we're actually doing it, we should be focusing on trying to move the weight with the intended muscle, so I'm moving it with the rear delt, so you need to think about what you're doing. Again, I've mentioned it previously, but if you're thinking about something else when you're in the gym and training, you're nowhere near gonna be as focused on the actual muscle. You're not gonna work it as hard. You need to focus on the actual working muscle to get the most out of the exercise. I find these are just that exercise that you can do perfect reps, you can do perfect reps, and then all of a sudden it's just like, nope. <laughs> They're just hard exercise, so again, I'm not really focusing on going too heavy because if you go too heavy, you're gonna get five to six reps or whatever, then not actually be able to stimulate the muscle hard enough. So I'm still shooting for like 12 to 15, but by the end of the set, I'm failing every single set. I get to the point where I just can't split my arms anymore, so that's kind of what I'm aiming for. This is why I brought Helen along, for shoulders. What is this all about? Just a joke. So last round, what we're going to do is we're going to shot a little cluster set on the end. This is quite nice. Uh, we've done cluster sets before if you followed this other sessions, if you haven't checked them out. Um, but basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to move a decent amount of weight for a lower amount of reps. Then I'm going to take a slight little bit of rest. Then I'm going to go again, a little bit more rest, and then I'm going to go again. So I'm going to shoot for six reps. So we're talking like 18 reps of the full set. But again, we're going to be moving every single rep with perfect form. So six, rest, six, rest, six. Five, six. When I'm resting, I'm just trying to keep the tension just there, not too much on my shoulders. Three, two, one. Last set. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, God. Oh. That is actually so good. And again, by doing them cluster sets, it allows us to keep the form absolutely perfect as well. So obviously when we start hitting towards failure and it starts having to really, really get the weight moving, like it does get a little bit harder, but with having that little bit of rest in between each set, it allows us to keep that perfect form. So that's why I'm doing it. <laughs> so we are gonna hit some single arm lap raises just to finish the session off. Once again, feel like you can never do too much side delts. So with this exercise, I really like it because with the cable resistance against you, you can lean away just a slight little bit. And that cable, as you're raising up, it's wanting to drag you straight back down. So it really, really, like what we talked about before, where we're looking about capping the delt off, it's really, really good for that. So again, I'm just leaning into the machine, getting a nice good stretch on my shoulder, raise, and then controlling down. Beauty. Ah. Uh. Seven. Eight. 
Such a good exercise. If you're not doing them, you need to be because they're one of my favorite exercises for short side delts. Whew. This is what we like. Dead gym, Saturday night. Getting that shoulder session in. And uh, it just can't be that feeling. It's wicked. You just get lost in it. It's good, spend two hours just smashing it as hard as you possibly can. Not like self-development. Shitting around 15 reps on each set, but Again, I'm just trying to sort of pump them out, burn them out now. I'm not using anything too heavy. Just overload the, overload the muscle, fill it up with blood. You know the score, you've heard me say it enough by now. So I'm getting used to driving the weight, but I'm still keeping everything under control. There's a difference between driving the weight and just hammering the weight, do you know what I mean? 30, 40, 50. Oh. We are going to hit the final set of the session, and once again, like we did on the rear delts, we're going to throw in a cluster set. So, again, perfect way to keep the form absolutely perfect, but again, use a, a decent bit of weight, nothing too crazy on this exercise, but again, get perfect form throughout the full set. So again, I'm going to pick six reps. I'm just going to try my best to hit six sets of six reps on this last little mini set right here. So, again, Focuses on hitting the side delts, overloading with them, uh, with them with as much blood as I possibly can. And, uh, and yeah, and just finishing the session with a quality pump, so. And what I do on this as well is I start with, I'm gonna start with a, a fair bit of weight, something that I know that I can do. And then if I feel like it's necessary, I'll drop the weight. If I feel like the form's going really, really sloppy and out the window, I will drop the weight as I go through the six sets. But I'm gonna try and maintain it as much as I can. Two sets to go. One, two. Three, four, five, six. God, this is getting solid now. Four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Ah. Oh my God. That is brutal. Perfect finisher. One, two, three. Four, five, six, eight, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, six. Ah. Uh. Three, four, five, six. Last set. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, God. Nothing left at the end of that. Oh, beauty session. Beauty session. Love training shoulders at the moment. Absolutely love it. Can't beat it once again. Filling up the side frame of your physique. It's so important, in my opinion. If you really want to create a nice V-tapered, aesthetic-looking physique, you need to cap them shoulders off, so. But yeah, that was shoulders. That is episode four done of the Raw and Ready series. And you know the score. We just got arms to go, and then we finished every single body part. And then it's going to be time to get on prep, and it's going to be time to take the channel to the next level yet again. So, yeah, hit shoulders once again. Real focus on well, to be fair, ticking all of the boxes, we're getting the heavy weight and we're getting the volume in, and we're getting that intensity up as far as we possibly can. And again, just focusing on, no matter what weight we're moving, we're always keeping the good form. We're again, driving the weight and not just kind of, not moving the weight too soft and just like, yeah, there's great being good form, but you've also got to get used to actually moving the weight with intent, all right? When we're hitting lat raises right there, if you're raising the weight like this, like, it's great, don't get me wrong, the form's absolutely spot on, but also the, that intensity needs to be there as well if you really want to make a good impact, stress the muscle out and make it change. So yeah, obviously I hope you guys 
enjoyed the video, took some good tips away from the video. And once again, please drop a comment if you did. Keep liking, keep sharing, keep commenting on the channel. I appreciate support as always. And uh, yeah, I look forward to the next session already. I'm signing out for this one, guys. But yeah, thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, that was shoulders. <laughs>